Hi, I'm Brenda. Welcome back to my quilt room. I know it's been quite a while since I made a video and we've had some problems, some health issues, and hopefully all of that's behind us now. Um, I did want to pick up and make some of the blocks that I had intended to make when I did block of the month. So the block that I'm going to show you today is the thread spool and it's a really easy block to make and I'm going to show you how to do it and also there'll be a PDF in the description below that you can click on so that you don't have to remember the sizes of the pieces. So let's get started. Okay, you're going to need four two and a half inch squares of background fabric. And this is all just to make one block. You will need two, two and a half by nine and a half inch, or these are five and a half inch, I'm sorry, rectangles. And then you will need two, whichever color fabric you decide to use as your thread spool, you'll need two pieces that are two and a half by nine and a half inches. Your thread will be a five and a half inch square. Now, you know, so this is going to be the color of your thread. I had a whole pile of scraps that I was going to start cutting into strips and squares. So I thought, oh, these would make pretty uh, thread for the spool. And so your first step will be to take two of your two and a half by five and a half inch rectangles and you're going to sew them down each side of your five and a half inch square. And then you just want to press those to the back side, to the dark side of your square. This makes, this makes the thread of your block. Now for these pieces that become the top of your thread spool, you need to mark on the back side of a two and a half inch square. You can either mark it like I did with a pencil or you can take your square and you can fold it and press it, just finger press it, so that you have a crease line. And you can lay it on there and follow in the valley of your crease line. Now, I marked mine and I sewed these, and I sewed them with the blue thread so that you could see. And you're going to press these back on each side and trim them off. Something that I like to do, and I've done this a couple of times, particularly if I'm working with squares that are smaller than the two and a half inches, I will sometimes take my glue stick and I will just put a little bit of glue on the fabric up in the corner where I know that's going to be cut off and discarded. And I'll just press that down and I need to turn it the right direction so that it holds my pieces in place. And you might want to do that if you're making a large pile, you're going to uh, assembly line sew and you want to make sure that you've got your, your pieces all lined up and you may have to come back and sew them later they'll already be on there and you won't be constantly having to resituate your pieces. So I've sewed these and you'll trim them back at the corners just like snowballing an edge and trim it down to about a quarter of an inch and then press them back with the dark side behind your background and do the same thing with your second piece. 
these were really easy to sew together. I did cut off the wrong end of one of my spool ends the first time around, so you need to be, I need to be more careful. And then after you've sewed your middle section together where your thread is, then you will put your two pieces of spool at each, in, at each end of your section and turn it over and I like to pin and so I just matched up the ends and put in a pin on each end and then sew down each side and when you're finished you'll have a thread spool block these came out to be nine and a half inches now one of the things that i like is that this middle piece that's your thread is large and i've seen other people do this where they make patchwork and the thread block that's the five and a half inch square in the middle um, actually is like a piece of patchwork but I thought this would be so cute if you like to do applique um, and I cut out a little heart and I thought oh I just might applique that into the middle of my block that would be so cute so hopefully going forward I'm gonna do some more of these old vintage blocks and you can sew up as many as you want. You could put them in a row. You can make an entire quilt out of it. You can set them together with sashing, or you can simply put them together um, in like a four patched type block. One go one way, one go another, and then put your other, you know, finished block up. So it would be really cute. You could make that like a four, a four square block. And it wouldn't take very many of those if you wanted to make, say, a baby quilt. But I thought that I thought it was really cute. It'd be a really cute, easy, quick block. If you have a lot of scraps like I do. I've got some other browns here that I thought I might use for my spool uh, piece to use them up when I don't have enough yardage to really use it for another complete project. I could scrap it all up. So that's the block for this month. Behind me, this quilt is called Royal Wedding. And it's a pattern that I downloaded from Missouri Star Quilt Company and I used a layer cake to make this. The layer cake that I had was very much like two colors, the pinks and the blues, and I had some leftover vintage of the off-white. So I made mine another row bigger than what their pattern was, but if you like this, that's where that came from. Now also, I have a new sewing machine and I may do a full video on this. I just got it a few weeks ago. It's a Baby Lock Jazz 2. And one of the reasons that I went ahead and purchased this, I got a really good deal and the lady who had been doing my long arm quilting for me for the past however many years um, has quit um, quilting and so I thought I would like to learn how to do my own quilting and I know you know this one has a really large throat space a lot of people purchase this machine just to do home quilting so there may be some of those videos coming from me in the future as I learn to do my own block uh, quilt as you go block or I may do a full one here and 
start in the center and work out from the sides. I don't know. So I've only had it a few weeks and I've only practiced with it a little bit. I did make my practice blocks for my uh, thread spool here on this machine. So until the next time, we'll see you later. Hope everyone's well.